Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. All right, so here we have the Unirow TS 48 volt kit. We're looking at, as you can imagine, a 48 volt battery. And the center of it all is the TS or the Tongsheng kit that we have right here with a Tongsheng motor. Uh, so let's go over the pieces really quick. This of course is your battery. It has a little meter when you press the button. It shows you how charged it is. Uh, it doesn't stay on when you remove your finger for a second, uh, but nonetheless, you can kind of see it unless you have big thumbs like some people. Uh, anyways, this one has a lock on it, which is really nice. Comes with a key. Uh, if you need a replacement key, I guess you'd have to contact Unirow uh, to do that. This is the mount for the battery. It goes onto the brazons on the down tube and it comes with spacers that you can see over here. This is where I have all the spacers and stuff. Uh, the crank, nothing too exciting about that. Bolt for it. This is the rotation counter for the back wheel. Uh, so this gets mounted to the chain stay, the bottom part of the triangle. And this little piece right here gets screwed into one of, of the spokes, doesn't really matter which one. And then you want it to come into contact and align with, or you want it to contact on the wheel and align with the magnet to count how many times the wheel is spinning. This is what gives you your speedometer. It may or may not actually affect the top speed that you'll feel, but it definitely has an effect on what it will read. So, uh, here you have your 4 to 1 cable. This just takes all the information from here and sends it to here. This is the display. Uh, it's not going to turn on, but uh, this is the display from APT Displays. It's a vertical display with lots of color on it, very bright. I can't wait to get it started up and show you a little bit more about it. These are your controls right here. Um, this is your basic control unit. It has the power and plus minus for more or less pedal assist. This also, if you press the power button briefly after the unit or after the bike is turned on, this will scroll through all the fun stuff, your spit on or your trip set, your timer, you know, kind of fun stuff. This is the throttle. So you might be really excited that, about this kit because it has a throttle capability for the mid drive unit here. And this is a torque sensing mid drive um, conversion system. So you have a torque sensor, mid drive, and a throttle. That's a combination that not a lot of production electric bikes have. It does exist, but here you have some pretty basic brake levers. Um, these do come with the kit as part of the electric system because they have a little magnet in here for an electronic output. So what this does, this will send a little signal via this electric cable. So this of course is your mechanical cable for actually stopping the bike. This electric cable um, connects to the control unit or sorry, the controller inside the motor, so that when you press on the brakes, this little magnet sensor will trip and it will cut off power to the motor. So that way you're never fighting against the motor when you're pressing on the brakes and you don't have to, you know, get two of those at once. Duplicate brake, here you got spacers for mounting um, the display. Got some more spacers and some zip ties to kind of clean it up a bit, some nuts and bolts. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Okay guys, so this is the time lapse for the conversion. All in all, it took me about three hours to accomplish from the time that I opened the door to the time that I closed the door, having swept and cleaned up and everything. I was working with a new shop in a new bike and a new motor system, so not having any familiarity was definitely, uh, definitely kind of a hindrance there. But uh, all in all, things went well. I had to redo the brakes, the shifters, uh, put some air in the tires, you know, a couple of mechanical things to get it running again, aside from the actual conversion parts. There was a few seized parts on there that I had to remove that took a little bit of gusto, because after all, this donor bike is not exactly a spring chicken. So <laughs> hopefully you found this helpful. Hey guys, so here we have the finished conversion. It's a nice, bright, and beautiful day here in Salt Lake. I am along the uh, canal road where it's a, a nice uh, little neighborhood uh, byway kind of thing. Not a lot of traffic or anything going on, so it's a great place to ride. Anyways, so with the system, it came out looking pretty good with one exception. So I'm gonna have to uh, ignore this camera mount that I have here. That's uh, not terribly important, but the motor system is pretty slim and that's one of the best things about it that I like. So actually putting it on the bike and not having it in hand, it kind of gets in scale with the rest of the bicycle and you can see that it's pretty, uh, pretty compact in there. And uh, I can tell you that that's putting out a lot of power based on its size, so I'm, I'm quite impressed. Uh, so it mounts right in here with the 38 to 42 uh, millimeter bottom bracket. You can see there's some extra spacing in here with some thread in case it was a little bit wider. 
Uh, the cords are exposed. Uh, maybe not exposed isn't the word. The cords and the cables um, are not routed internally. You can see they're just kind of zipped on a little bit hastily, truth be told. I was trying to get things done the other night and they're kind of bundled up here, zip tied around and then pulled up to the front of the bike. Um, so with the system uh, on the bicycle, uh, it does bring a, uh, a few questions about the bicycle itself. So I didn't talk a whole lot about the donor bike, the bicycle that I used. It's pretty emblematic of a garage bicycle. Uh, when people think, I got a bike in the garage, I'm going to pull it out and put a system on, they think of something kind of like this. So this is an older specialized expedition. It's not a particularly high-end model. You know, it has some of the, you know, the rim brakes, the tire is fading quite a bit. And uh, the shifters are some pretty, you know, pretty simple uh, mechanical uh, shifters with the grip twist, um, which work just fine. Um, but they're not my personal choice. Uh, but this is what people think of when they think of a garage conversion is something like this. Uh, and I can tell you from experience <laughs> on this particular bike that I certainly wish that I had a better bicycle. I rode the bike or I rode the finished conversion around for a little while and I think to myself, man, I wish the bike was better. <laughs> but anyways, back to the, uh, oops, sorry, back to the conversion at hand. Uh, so starting in the middle of the bike with the motor, the motor went on pretty much without a hitch. Uh, I had to get the existing um, bottom bracket out, which it had a seized part in there and that took a little while to muster up the gusto to get that off. But the motor system itself slid right in and then it mounted up onto these spots here. And it's pretty good. The chain is actually in really good condition, uh, which is nice for a garage bike. Uh, the chain is in really good condition, so I just kind of put that on there. I had to adjust the derailleur uh, in order for it to shift properly. Uh, on the back of the bike, there is a color-coded uh, cable uh, right down in here for the speed sensor. Um, so this little guy comes out from the motor, plugs in right here, and it doesn't fit in any other plug, which is nice, and I'll probably talk about that up in the front of the bike. Speed sensor comes back into here, and then it mounts onto these provided zip ties. <laughs> they gave me uh, two black zip ties <laughs> for that. Um, and then this little magnet screws onto one of the spokes. It doesn't really matter which one, and then it rotates, and it comes into contact. Well, sorry, it doesn't come into contact. It comes past this little spot right here on the speed sensor. It doesn't actually go in the middle uh, underneath my finger. It actually goes, or sorry, it doesn't go on the edge where this little bolt is, where my finger is over. Uh, it goes kind of in the middle. Anyways, um, so that's what gives you your speed reading. And you can set it for different wheel sizes. Right now it's set for 26, but you can go up to 28 if you'd like. I didn't try going down. Perhaps it goes to 24, but who knows. Anyways, coming back up to the front of the bike uh, on the motor system has a 42 cha 42 tooth chain ring uh, up on the front comes with these cranks these are 170 millimeter cranks uh, i put some different pedals on here some pedals that i found uh, at the shop um, up here with the battery um, so this is actually a very important consideration is that the battery is mounted um, what i would consider upside down so the battery comes on a mount you probably saw that plate in the earlier section the battery comes on the mount that um, where the battery itself slides into position on that mount kind of tucks down in there uh, however the brazons for this bike which the brazons are these little spots right here where you can screw in either a water bottle cage or a pump or in this case a battery mount the brazons for the mount are actually pretty low um, they're kind of low down here and so when you get the mount onto the bike uh, then you have to put the battery on and when i put the mount on screwed it in the brazons that was fine however when i put the battery on there the battery has a tapered shape and so the battery was coming into contact with the the chain ring up uh, up on the front gearing. And so I decided to turn it upside down to allow the tapered edge of the battery to kind of um, slow down a little bit. So let me uh, adjust the camera. The tapered edge of the battery starts out wide um, on what's considered the bottom of the battery. And then it kind of gets thinner as it goes down. So that way I'm able to avoid contact with the chain ring here kind of get a little bit of a space uh, between the battery uh, coming into contact there so this is not this is not an optimal solution to have the battery mounted upside down because as a result then um, the battery is held physically held into position by the tension of the battery mount which the battery is just mounted by the battery and the battery mount come together with tension and then it it locks into position with the little key. Key is on the opposite side of the charging port right here. 
So what's holding this battery in and preventing it from sliding down and falling off is the tension in the mount, on the bottom of the mount, and also that little pin that locks down in there. So I would, in this case, with this conversion that you see here in front of you, this is not optimal. I would rather have this turned the other way, turned it upside down so the battery is properly placed. However, the included brazons on that position wouldn't allow for it. So this is a usable solution for now that I'm personally okay with myself. However, I would not recommend doing this, especially if you want to do anything uh, mildly bumpy or off-road. Um, but this is okay for me. I'm okay using this. I would not sell it. I would not recommend it, but it's kind of a personal choice. And that's one good thing about conversions is that you can kind of gauge uh, your own comfort level with particular parts or how they mount and things like that. Uh, speaking of, uh, so you have your wires that come from the, from the motor down here and they come up and I've kind of bundled them up there. Your main battery cables are these... Um, the wires themselves are kind of open. They're not exposed totally where you can see the brass and all that, but uh, these battery cables are not um, covered up. They're not waterproof the way that you see these other connectors. So this is a, a connector that's waterproof as well as this one. The ones up front on the top of the bike are. These ones aren't. So these are kind of battery mounts or battery cables that you would put on the bike and then you would, I would recommend putting your own heat shrink over it. You can get heat shrink in lots of different sizes. Perhaps there's a local electronics store that can provide something. Um, you can even take this wire in. The mount itself, after you take the battery off, is very easy to cart around. So take this in and say, hey, I need to get some heat shrink because these ones are meant to be uh, not, not exactly permanent, but um, I would be fine just covering these up with heat shrink and then it would dress it up, make it look really nice. That way your main battery mount is the only on like uh, connection point for here. Um, so that's what I would do. I didn't have quite as much time on this one. So, and this conversion is not gonna be a long-term solution for me. So that's why I'm okay with just having them out. And also it's a good talking point about the conversion system. So you can see what you're dealing with. So anyways, the main four to one cable goes alongside that and it comes up to here. This is some extra cable length for all of your parts in case you have like wide handlebars or if you have a longer bike, say a cargo bike or something, there's some extra cable length that I've bundled up here that goes up to the control panel. So let's talk about the control panel a little bit. Um, hopefully there's not too much glare here. So this is a full color display that shows you quite a few things. And of course, I, I'm not able to show you it in action because of the glare, but you have a speedometer readout. You have your miles per hour right in the middle, and you can set that for kilometers, of course. Underneath that, you see the 0.0, .0 amps, and below that, the number one is for pedal assist. And alongside the, or not alongside, but uh, on the other side of the speedometer, which is like regular, on the underside, what you have is a wattage indicator. So when you get the bike moving, it actually shows you the active watts that are running through the system. And of course, on the very bottom, you have a trip, a timer, and those cycle through between trip, range estimate, a timer, uh, and a few other metrics. Uh, the full specifications are on electricbikereview.com if you're curious. And also on the top right, you have a battery indicator, both the estimate, which is the little battery picture, and then just left of that, you see 100%. You can change that to be voltage if you want to get into that kind of detail. And that's accessed through the settings menu. Uh, so let me show you how to get into the settings menu because it took me a minute to figure that out. Uh, so the remote switch is pretty simple. All it has is a plus, a minus for pedal assist, and also the power button. If you press and hold the plus button, that will turn on a headlight. This particular kit doesn't come with a headlight, um, but perhaps that feature can be added later. Uh, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, holding the negative button will be a walk assist, which is very similar to a throttle on the other side of the bike. However, it's good for ramps or if you happen to be walking along on the left side, which is a little more natural for a lot of folks. Um, so the, the settings menu is accessed after the bike is turned on. You press the power button one time and then you press and hold the second time. So you go click press. And then after you do so, the settings menu will come up when you hold it for, oh, I'll say like about five seconds or so, then the settings menu should come on. There we go. 
And then when you press the up and down arrow, that allows you to get into a metric and then pressing the power button will confirm and you can kind of goof it from there. You can change from metric to imperial, From you can change the language, the brightness of the screen, how fast the system will turn off if you want it to indicate the battery in percentage or if you want it to indicate in voltage, uh, fun stuff like that. But the bike is already set up the way I want it. So another thing to talk about while we're up front is the throttle. So that's a pretty good combination of features that you have on this kit is that you have a mid-drive bike with a 48 volt, uh, 14 amp hour battery. So that's a slamming battery with a mid-drive kit, torque sensor in the kit that I'm gonna talk about on the ride. And you have a full color display with the throttle um, totally active. There's no restrictions on the throttle. It's, uh, it's unfortunately, <laughs> it's one of those strange things that you see in electric bikes every now and again is that a throttle will have some kind of limitation. I've seen it before where the throttle will not engage unless the bike is moving at a few miles an hour or so. So you have to get started and then the throttle will be active. Uh, I've seen other ones where the throttle will only be active if the bike is pedaling. Uh, so you can put it in a super low gear and then use the throttle, but kind of rotate the pedals as a formality. It's, it's rare, it's not entirely common, but uh, this is a full throttle override, so it's not limited by pedal assist. Example, if you put it in pedal assist number one, it's not gonna give you a tiny bit of throttle as you press it. And then when you put it on pedal assist five, it'll allow full throttle. It doesn't work that way. On this one, the throttle is fully active, full override all the time. And that's the way that I prefer it. Usually a throttle is for myself. I use it to kind of get me started at a light or to kind of blitz myself out of a little tiny situation or something. So it, again, that's kind of rare anyway. Usually I sit back and pedal assist and kind of go for the ride. But I like to have full throttle override instead of you know, having to jump through these hoops. So again, it's kind of rare, but it's a really nice way that they did the throttle right. They did the pedal assist right. It's really good combo of features. It, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's go back to the front of the bike and talk about the waterproof connectors. So this is a really good thing. They have color coded um, waterproof connectors from Gillette. Uh, there is an electric bike review video of a factory tour uh, for Gillette connectors if you're curious. I left this one kind of out so you can see it. Um, with a little bit of gusto, they come apart. It's kind of tough with one hand. Um, but these connectors are color coded, so one of them will be green, one of them will be yellow. That way you can never mix them up. Well, I shouldn't say never. <laughs> that way it's harder to mix them up and they go in pretty plug and play between the display, the remote switch, the throttle, um, also the brake levers have brake inhibitor cables. So these brake levers did come with the bicycle. These are a four finger metal housing uh, mechanical brake. Uh, so this required some adjustment to get working on the brake side because the bike needed to be kind of tuned up a little bit anyway. Um, but aside from that, the electric system does operate with the brakes where you have this little electric cable that goes into the controller. So what this does, this brake handle has a little magnet inside of it. And when you pull on the brake lever, it moves the magnet away from its little casing. And then that sends a signal to the motor to cut off the power. The purpose of that is so that you're never fighting against the motor. If you sit here on full throttle and keep it down and then some obstacle comes up and you slam on the brakes, you're not gonna be fighting the motor because these brakes will send a signal to stop motor power. And that's on both the front and also the rear. Uh, so that's what you got going on up in the front. And let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take you for a ride. <laughs> okay, so uh, I rode along the uh, canal road for a little bit and here I am in a, it looks like public services and a park area. Um, I don't think I've ever been here. Uh, anyways, so the kit is doing <laughs> very, very well. Uh, one thing I kind of mentioned prior is that I rode the bike a little bit and I was kind of disappointed that I used this bike for the donor. I wish I had a better bicycle. And <laughs> that's a, after riding it a little bit more, uh, I definitely feel that way. Uh, because this bike, it's, it has rim brakes, it's a little old, the tires are kind of stiff, and so it's, it's really kind of uh, hampering what this kit can do because this kit is really, really nice. Uh, so yeah, the, the kit has a torque sensing pedal assist, and I gotta say, it's a really, really good system. Uh, a lot of times when you ride a conversion, uh, you'll ride something that has a cadence-based uh, system in which it's counting the rotation of the crank to engage the pedal assist. 
and normally that has kind of a delay. You gotta push on the system a little bit to get the cranks moving in order for that assist to kick in. But on the torque sensing one, it's it kicks in much faster. And even inside of that, you know, knowing that the torque sensors kick in faster, even understanding that there's still a little bit more to consider because companies will program them differently. So one of them will be programmed for um, a little bit higher of a curve or a little bit lower of a curve. And what that does is just change how, how it responds. So in it, what you have, I'm, I'm presuming they have a Hall effect sensor in here. And so between the cranks, so if you got your pedal and then your crank, and then of course this is the bolt, the, the space in between the, this bolt here and then the bolt on the other side right there, the space in between there, that shaft, um, that shaft is where a lot of torque sensors work their magic, where they have a Hall effect sensor, where the shaft itself is normal, but they put a little microchip disc around there that reads the magnetic difference in the flex of that shaft. Uh, so in the shaft, um, just imagine just a metal bar or rod, if you twist it, if you flex it, the magnetic field that's surrounding that shaft changes just a little bit as it's being flexed. And then that microchip around there takes that magnetic field, transfers into a voltage signal that the controller can understand, and then the controller sends that to the motor, or asks for battery power to the motor, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, it's a pretty, I mean, it's technical. What I've told you now is about the limit of my <laughs> expertise in it, but uh, it's, it has a lot of very sensitive things going on. That's why torque sensors are so lauded. That's why they're a very nice feature to have. And this one does it very, very well. I've seen other torque sensors that use different methods to engage and they work, but they're a little finicky. If they get knocked or if they get hit or bumped out of position, then they're kind of difficult to get back into, into place. This one not only is protected by the wrist, rice rocket over there. Anyways, this one's not only protected by the motor casing and all of that stuff, so it's not gonna get messed up or out of the way. It just feels really good the way that they've programmed it. I'm very impressed. This system feels really nice the way that I've ridden it. And granted, I granted, I don't have the chance to take it on some serious off-road because this bicycle <laughs> certainly wouldn't do it. But dude, this torque sensor is, is nice. Uh, so I had the chance So I had the let's turn around a little bit. I had the chance to take it on a little bit of a hill when I got here, and it picked up very, very quickly. I was initially a little bit like I don't know if leery is the word. Initially, I was a little bit uh, um, hesitant for off for taking it up a hill or like an off-road condition because when I was riding on the smooth land, it had a pretty smooth. Um, engagement. That's the way I like it when I'm riding on a uh, on a smooth surface like a road. If I'm riding on the road, I want something that's nice and smooth and kind of relaxing. That's one feature about electric bikes that I particularly enjoy is that you don't have to worry so much about um, goofing around with all the gears and everything. You've got a motor to help even things out and turn things into flatland if you kind of want to imagine it that way. This bike honestly suits my personal needs very well. It's smooth when I want it to be. It picks up and gives a lot of guts when I get to a hill, and that's great. And I could see this having a lot of, a lot of really good applications. It's a smaller physical motor, so you could do some mountain biking with it. Uh, if you wanted to get into like some serious off-road, you'd probably want to get into a production bike because they can mount the motor literally like into the frame of the bicycle. Whereas on this one, it's, it's a bolt-on kit, so you don't have that kind of luxury. Um, but if you wanted to do some mild off-road the way that I do sometimes, this would be a great system for it. Another thing that I really appreciate about this motor is that it's, it's pretty quiet. I've actually had to goof around a little bit in order for it to make noise. And the purpose is so that you guys in the video can hear the motor kick in. So what I've done is I've cranked the assist all the way up to level five and I've put the mechanical gears uh, in the lightest gear. So that way you're gonna hear the motor do a little bit of extra work in order to try to catch up to the gearing. Uh, so here we go, I'll put you down by the chain and you can hear it kick in.
And like I said, that was in a rather you know rare condition where you have the motor system cranked all the way and you have the mechanical system all the way down. So that would be used for climbing a steep hill um, or if you just want to keep it in a really light gear and you want to have the motor do a little bit more of the work. So you could do it in that, but otherwise, I, I mean, it's pretty darn quiet, uh, especially consider the power this thing's putting out. It's a 500 watt uh, system. Okay, let's go over a little bit of ice. <laughs> This is a 500 watt system, which is double what uh, a lot of the big name production ones are rated for. Now, what they put out is a different story, uh, but this is a really nice, uh, I'm liking this a lot. Uh, some of the drawbacks to this are based on its use as a conversion system. Uh, so you're gonna have to put it on yourself. If you're mildly handy, you could figure it out. However, you will need uh, a few specialty bike tools uh, in order to make this happen. You'll need a tool to pull off uh, your bottom bracket, which could be specialty, like it could be, a, there's a few different sizes of tools that you might need in order to do that. Um, there's a few kind of standards, but uh, that threat exists. So you'll need to get uh, that tool. You'll also need to get a tool to pull the pedals off of your bike, uh, more than likely. Um, it's not something you can find at Harbor Freight. You gotta go to a bike shop or go online to find those tools. Okay guys, so my final thoughts on the Uniro Tongsheng kit, uh, the 48 volt 500 watt, is quite positive. I like it a lot. The compromises for this kind of a kit, I'm all right with. And first and foremost, they're going to be that the kit does come from China. And so as a result, you're gonna have to wait a little while for it to come. In this case, it took about two weeks to ship from China before it got to me. Um, so aside from waiting for that and the potential of waiting for a part um, is that when you're going through the buying process, if you have a specific question for them, there could be a little bit of a language barrier. These guys know bicycles pretty well, but if you ask for something more specific like, hey, do you guys have a system that'll work for a Trek ABC bike? You might not be familiar with that particular brand, so um, you know that's one thing to consider is that they're bike guys, but they're not American bike guys. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the system itself, I like a lot the torque sensing pedal assist, the throttle, full color display, waterproof connectors, uh, the flexibility of the mounting is all a very big plus. I like all of these things a lot. Uh, in the case of this particular bicycle, the battery mount didn't fit the way that it's designed to because the spacing on the bottom bracket is pretty narrow. Um, the, this kit can fit a 38 to a 42 millimeter and that's really nice. Um, but on this one, it's kind of thin, so it barely didn't didn't work the way it's supposed to I got it to you know with a little bit of Mickey Mouse I had to turn the battery upside down like I mentioned before and it's not optimal but again these are all things that have to do with the bicycle and that's my biggest complaint about a conversion in general is that you get this awesome system and I genuinely like this system a lot you get this awesome system with great features and it feels so nice when you get it running and everything and you take that and in this case I put it on the you know an old bike from the garage that I wish was better. So uh, if you've got a great bicycle, or if you want to find a great bicycle, I think this is a really great kit to go alongside it. If you're like me and you get a bicycle from the garage, you're going to say, you know, honey, I got this great kit and it's going to do really well and it will. And then after you ride it around for a while, you're going to be like, honey, I want to get a bike. <laughs> <laughs> so be aware, if, if if you get this kind of kit, you're gonna wind up getting a bike to fit it. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, you can compare this bike with other electric bike kits, uh, as well as other bicycles from Unero, actually. Uh, we did a review on their e-torque model. It's a bright red bike. Uh, so you can find that bike as well as some other kits for comparison as well as get the full specifications and even participate in some of the forums at electricbikereview.com. Uh, so other than that, I'll see you guys later and ride safe.